Hi everyone, it's Jeanette, Crafty Dork here with another Stitch of the Month. Just want to let you know that it'll probably just be Stitch of the Month for a little while. Um, I'm, um, I'm struggling and my daughter's struggling at the moment, so um, we're just going to play it all by ear. But I love Stitch of the Month and um, so I'm going to be doing that. And bonuses, if I can get another one in as well, we will be doing that as well. So let's get started. We'll just have a quick flip through like I usually do. We've done the straight stitch, the back stitch, the stem stitch, and now we are on to blanket stitch. What I did for the blanket stitch, I actually got out some of my blanketing and I did and blanket stitch around the edge then these little leaves for um, like a cyclamen um, down here um, the little flowers for now what was that Can, um, oh I can't remember these little flowers I've just made little flowers and this one's a hollyhock I remember that one and then I just filled in French knots along the bottom just to make it look um, pretty in the garden I was going to do a row of stitching up here with um, a whole load of little light bunches of grapes for wisteria but we might do all that when we get to the French knots so that goes on to this page and then I looked at that page and I don't like it with this one so I'm not going to use that page um, as such I'm going to use a piece of cream um, what do you call it? Um, felt this time. And I'm just getting my rotary cutter. Um, where is it? There you are, you little thing. And I think I've got a... Uh, we'll use this one. So I'm just going to sort of make it... Um, yeah, so it's been a little bit of a... A funny month this one and I think I'll really be um, happy to have a bit of a holiday away just to you know do my own my own thing and we had to go down to an engagement to Adelaide on the weekend which was beautiful my gorgeous one of my little sister's twinnies um, and his beautiful full fiance had their engagement party and it was just just delightful absolutely delightful um takes a lot for me to get out and about though so it was a bit of a bit of a trial but we got there and um i'm glad i do take the effort to get out of my comfort zone i think there's a lot of us out there that um relate to that sort of thing okay so now i'm going to I'm going to use my friction pen um, because what I want to do, here's the blanket stitch as it's normally done. You can also do it like two rows. So you have another, a pretty, that's the double stitch blanket stitch. That's the single one that usually just like this one goes around the edge of a blanket or around the edge of a project I do it around the edge of those little um, caravans and the sewing machines and little bits that I make and these are the little circle flowers so I'll show you how to do those um, there's also you can do a bit of a stitch I hope that's in I'll bring it just down a little bit so that's a little bit of a stitch and then you do your blanket stitch on top of that and that's called a detached blanket stitch and then a twisted you, you, you obviously do it so that it twists now I'm not going to go through all of those and there's the blanket stitch you can do your long and your short and your you know on a curved line or it's it, no, it doesn't end 
you can go around like this and then do another little one in the center and another one in the center again and they look beautiful called a blanket stitch looped um, and there's your scallop as a blanket stitch and then you can cut it off and it looks like a beautiful scalloped edge on a project so we will just do the plane at the minute and the circles we'll see how much time we get so i'm just going to do like i often often do um just do a bit of a line across here to you don't have to do the line if you're comfortable sewing and you know that that's going to be um you know your beautiful stitch is going to be very straight um then you can do that now with the circles you can make a circle you know draw your circle out or you just you just wing it by, and once we get to that i will show you now for this because i'm using felt and blanketing i'm going to use a needle that's got a blunt end and a big eye because i'm going to use my wool and this is um most of it is appleton i have got some i think these are dmc's um, i used to do um wool embroidered blankets for the kids when they were um my kids when they were born and then different family members as they came on the scene uh, i might do a bright color um or like a dark color so that you'll be able to see as i go and i should have had all these um done up ready to go but not to go and it's you wouldn't believe it it's nearly half past 11 and i'm still in my jammies i'm just couldn't get out of them today and i think i might be ended up back on the the bed for a little bit of a nanny this afternoon we've got the little granddaughter we've got a babysit this afternoon a little Greta um, the hospital's in a bit of a flurry at the moment so mum's working an extra long shift today and dad's got afternoon shift so we do what we do and then I just do an applique knot there around the needle and pull it through now we'll use the line as though it's the edge of the um, felt so you start off with your knot on the edge then you come down and you put your needle up to that stitch again just have your wool around the edge of it so that as you come through you've got that loop then you do the same again i can't even see my line now so this will all be wonky so you come up have your stitch laying along there and pull it again and that's all blanket stitches and it depends on the project that you're doing as to how you want to use it whether you want to have teeny weeny little tiny ones <coughs> um, when I'm going around the edge of my um, um, caravans i do a really little tiny one to so that the edge looks really nice and neat so you do them and you do them close together so, and i'm just hoping that i'm still yeah. oops keep it straight This is where keeping it, your wool along the edge of the, like that, is a better idea. I'll go this 
do it like this way. It's still, you can still see it. And so, you know, then if you want to do one that's a real um, crazy, crazy one, do your long stitch, do a short stitch. Whoops. When your wall gets like that, just hang it down and let it unravel itself. Okay. Then you might want to do... Sorry, I'm going up and down here, aren't I? Like that. So you can do a small and then a large, and then a big... And then, then you can, if you wanted to, you could do your um, one that's going to go um, in like a scallop. I don't know if I'll do a very good scallop, but we'll see. So that you've got your stitches all coming up. So you can see it's very, it's a very um, easy stitch to do and it's very relaxing um, to just, you know, when I do my caravans and things going around the edges of those, um, I've sort of finished before I start. Now I'm not sure if this is the correct way, it's the Jeanette way. When I finish off, I have, like this is in inside that and I go back into that little hole there where I came out and that finishes off the end and I'm, I think that's how you do it um, but like I said um, I've been doing it like that for so long that if I was showing the correct way to do it I really wouldn't know how to change my ways I'd keep flipping back into my old old habits let's get you back where you belong so that's that one. Okay, let's do another colour just because we can. They're not going to match at all. So we'll do a bit of orange. Hey? I haven't got any uh, on the orange on the other side. And when, with the wool, I just fold it in half because it's this is Appleton. This one. Um, it just goes through the eye of the needle better than trying to point it, put a fuzzy-ended piece of wool through. Okay, so then I just tie it off again. Up. So I'll just quickly go along the top and I will come back to you because I'll just do... Stitches along the top like that, and then I will come back and do the bottom with you. Save you having to watch the same thing over and over again. Okay, so I'll be back. Okay, so for this one, you can either start at this end. Or you can start at the other end. It's entirely up to you. Um, I'll start this end. I want to start in the middle of that. In the middle of those two. And then, so this will be like do it if you're a left-hander doing it. So you go down into the middle of those stitches and back up into there. Where you were before. And pull it through. Then you lay your thread along the other way okay so then you come back up into here so it's exactly the same it's just that you're making a little bit of a pattern uh, a lot of this um, blanket stitch is done for applique work you know around the edges of your appliques um, and um, then it's a very tiny little stitch and you usually use your use the embroidery cotton for that or 
applique thread which is a nice strong um, thread which will hold it in place and you, normally your little applique pieces you have a sticky felt a sticky backing to it um, like an interfacing so that that holds in place while you're um, stitching around it so that is the second little you know it's um basic you can tiz it up you can make it neater or i'm doing this very quickly so that you can see that um not every um embroidery has to be um neat as a pin it's nice when you do do some beautiful neat um, little embroidery pieces and get the, the stitch every stitch exactly the same but for some of them a bit like the, the ones with Susanna that we do um, her little ones you know it's nice to have a little bit of unevenness to um, um, make the work just look a little bit um, pretty and and different unique in your own little way I don't know what I've done there, but we've got a big, bit of a mess at the back, but we won't worry about that. And what I often do, this piece probably isn't any good for anything, um, but I'll just thread onto a piece of, um, this is the felt from the, um, and then like those pieces I can use again. And see, when I fold them up like that, I wouldn't have a clue where the, the piece is, so that just helps me to, keep them under control and not throw them away you could throw them into a little container um, those would not while you're trying to get them undone um, embroidery thread doesn't um, and sh it's shiny so especially the machine embroidery stuff now I'll do a perhaps a um, where's my I had some, some pink from the other side we'll do that one <coughs> And we'll do a flower and show you how the flower works so you basically start at the same way um, your uh, edge like on the edge of your blanket the edge of your applique is going to be the edge of the flower and the long straight pieces are going to be the center of the flower you can leave it like I have. I've just left the centers and I think they look really nice. You could put a, um, per, a seed pearl or a little bead in the center or you could put a French knot, but I quite just like them left um, like that. I was a bit chuffed when I mastered that, um, that stitch and it's probably one of my favorites when I'm doing a little garden. Okay, so I hope you can see that little black circle so we start at the edge I suppose if I guesstimate and you can go around like this too if you want to but it's not necessary but I guess if you're just starting out it, it's it's an, a good way to um, keep your little flower nice and neat and then you don't have to um be disappointed with how you've uh, done your first one i remember my first one was i had it all on one side and nothing on the other side and so it, it's exactly the same and you just go in and around keeping your thread straight up into the edge pulling it tight same deal again These look nice too if you do it on a um, um, piece of fabric that's got some padding to it and you just pull them a little bit tighter, um, they'll um, puff up the, um, puff up because of the quilting behind. Sometimes if you use a real flat, I think I've flattened mine up, no here, see there where it's pulled into the center I've probably pulled my stitches a bit tight 
but you can just ease them back out with your finger and they'll sit down again. <clears throat> so this is blanket stitch and it would be so good to see what you all do with yours. Um, like like um, most times I'll put my finished little one with the, the word on it um, at the end of the video and um, you can see how I did that how I will do that this is a reasonable uh, quality oh my fingers they are so too much sewing I'm not doing as much paperwork um, journaling and so forth um, and I've got a funny feeling that may just um, not be happening for a, a, a quite a while um, so to all of you guys who who like um, all the paper crafting um, it probably won't be happening um, much anymore having said that um, I'm hoping to do and I just finish it off in a similar way there so that's your little flower now I've got some embroidery thread here I'll see how it goes on this felt yeah so I may not be doing the paper craft but I do want to do a journal like a sewing journal um, using all materials for all the little nooks and crannies and tucks so that may be what we do after I get back from my holidays in June, July, or August. August. Where did I put my threads there? So, I hope you all understand. Um, I'm sure you will. You're a fantastic bunch and I love you all to pieces. You've all supported me for a long, long time. Okay, so that's that. Now, if I grab a piece of some embroidery thread... Um, been sorting all my um, threads out last night and on the way to Adelaide the other day I wound all the way down and wound all the way back um, well, it doesn't matter what I use does it really oh, let's use that one I've got three of those or two of those now you can use it in um, for six strands and that would look nice in that size or like I'll do now and show you a tiny one and I might actually do that on <coughs> let's get this off on here and then I'll cut it off and stick it on there so I'll use the two strands use these come and have six strands <coughs> And I just pull from the bottom and it all comes out. This is a bigger needle than you really need to, but it will suffice. So once again, I'll do a knot at the end um, I think traditional embroidery you don't knot at the end but I just do the like that and I will just do a little if you can see so once again we will come in at the edge Through the center
so you can see you can go as large or as small as you like this one looks a little bit messy for some reason I'll probably Yeah, and then I just go into that corner. You can sort of see where that and that join. And just go in the corner there and pull the thread through and start to. Looks a bit like a straight little star on the back. And that evidently means that you've done it. Pretty good. Oops, on our camera. Okay, so that's the stitch. That's the little like that. So that's a little tiny one, and then if you Hold that top edge over. You can Okay, that you just pick up some of your piece, pick up some of the what you're sewing it onto, so a little bit of that and a little bit of under there. Like I said, this needle is probably way, 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 way too big, but. For demo purposes, a little bit under there. And then underneath this, I will write the word blanket stitch and go over it with probably back stitch is the easiest to. I could probably go around it in blanket stitch, but we'll see how we go. And I'll put that at the end. Just over there, just there, yes, that's it. Okay, so it's a bit crooked, but that's cool. I'll look back in years to come, hopefully, or my kids will look back and see how a bodgy, what a bodgy cry, uh, embroiderer I was. But it's all good. It's all our handmade stuff. We do it because we enjoy it. Okay. So there is our blanket stitch. Okay. And like I said, I'll do blankets down there. And um, you'll see that in the at the end of the video so thank you very much for joining i hope to see some of your beautiful projects i'll leave the link to paper possibilities crazy crafters um and you can pop things on there um join up and um we'll have a great time hope, happy crafting and bye for now